Happy happy hour, I'm Dave the Basement Bartender. In a single day, I'm going to visit 11 countries and have 17 drinks. Of course, I'm never actually going to leave Florida. I'm at Walt Disney World's Epcot World Showcase, where I'm about to drink my way around the world. Let's get this thing started. Basement Bartender. I'm starting the day in the United Kingdom. While the Rose and Crown Pub is a fantastic location to score a drink, I'm actually interested in the Magner's Irish Pear Cider from the beer cart. This is bright, crisp, and fruity without being overly sweet. It does add some juice concentrate, but there are no added sugars or sweetening agents, so it imparts a hint of sweetness without being syrupy. It's a really nice way to start a very full day of drinking. Moving to Canada, I'm gonna go full on sweet with an Aniskalen Ice Vine. Canada's winter season is perfect for ice wine as harvest begins when temperatures drop below 8 degrees Celsius. Frozen grapes are harvested in the middle of the night, which results in a highly concentrated sugar-rich wine with tropical and citrus fruit flavors and sweet stone fruit aromas, all coming from grapes. Continuing clockwise, I arrived in Mexico. I took a quick break to enjoy my friends the Three Caballeros at a Grand Fiesta tour before making my way to the tequila bar. My flight included the three basic tequilas, Blanco, Reposado, and Añejo. Blancos are the youngest variety and have never been aged. Reposados are aged between two months and a year, while Añejos are between one and three years. Always taste from youngest to oldest and have a palate cleanser in between. What you'll notice as you progress is with age comes additional complexity and flavors imparted by the barrel it's aged in. That's essentially the only difference between these spirits. The longer the spirit is in the barrel, the more time it has to mellow and absorb flavors and color. While I like to start off by sipping to actually taste the differences, this is tequila. Shooting is basic required. Next, we'll travel to Norway, land of Vikings, and apparently Anna and Elsa's frozen adventure. But I'm interested in coffee and pastry from Kringla Bakery Og Cafe. I sample a bit of school bread, a sweet roll with custard and coconut, and Viking coffee, which includes both Camorra coffee liqueur and Bailey's Irish cream. Neither of these spirits has Nordic origins, but the combination works so well with the school bread that I just really don't see any other choice here. And to be honest, it's the school bread that screams Norway for me. Once we arrive in China, I order a Tipsy Ducks in Love, which combines bourbon, coffee, tea, cream, and chocolate. Like Norway, there are no Chinese spirits involved. This drink is based on Hong Kong's Yunyang. Since Hong Kong was under British rule from 1839 to 1997, afternoon tea was an important part of the culture. While the craze for tea persists, there's less time to sit down and enjoy a spread of pastries and tea in the middle of the afternoon. Yunyang combined the relaxing flavors of tea with a shot of strong coffee to keep the day moving forward. While the flavors don't scream China, they do scream tasty. My next destination was Germany. Germany, where I sampled one of the most talked about drinks in all of Epcot, Schaffehofer's Pink Grapefruit Hefeweizen. It's 50% Schaffehofer Hefeweizen and 50% grapefruit juice. I'm not much of a beer drinker. I say why stop at fermentation? Distill it and make it whiskey. Okay, whiskey may be a bit more complex than distilled beer, but not much. This reminds me more of a cider than a beer. A little fruity, just a hint of hops, and overall delight. Onward to Italy, I was entertained by street performers, beautiful scenery, and a tiramisu popsicle. With a Bellini, of course. A Bellini is simply Prosecco and peach puree. The dry Prosecco provides a wonderful counterpart to the sweetness of the peach. And of course, everything's more fun with bubbles. By this part of the day, I decided it was probably a good idea to get some real food. So I grabbed some smoked ribs and chicken from the Regal Eagle Smokehouse in Liberty Square. You can get a lot of barbecue at Disney World. Most of it is okay. The offerings here are actually really tender, really good smoke flavor, and I was very happy. You can also order a Tennessee lemonade, which is Minute Maid lemonade, peach flavoring, and Jack Daniels. This was a disappointment. I tasted no peach, very little whiskey, and just okay lemonade. So I decided to order a second U.S. drink and got a black raspberry nectar mead. Mead is fermented wine made from honey. I've tried making it myself and determined I didn't like meat. After trying this, I've determined I don't make very good mead. Even with the added fruit, it's semi-dry with just a hint of raspberry and ultimately very tasty. I continued on to Japan where I ordered a blood orange sake mist, which is an adult kakigori or shaved ice. Sake is a rice wine that offers a bright acidic tone to drinks. I found it completely lacking in this frozen sugary mess. I quickly moved on to the kingdom of Morocco, which I personally find to be one of the most uniquely beautiful 
designs in the park. I went ahead and ordered three pastries, baklava, saragli, and kataifi, and washed it down with a Tusker Pale Lager. As I mentioned, I'm not a huge beer fan, but I can appreciate a good beer. This was beer. It wasn't bad beer, but it wasn't good beer. Similarly, the pastries were fine. A lot of honey was in all three, and while texture of each was different, there wasn't too much difference in flavor. I scurried over to Le Vine de France, where I ordered a trio of champagne, including a dry Moet and Chandon Imperial Brut, a semi-sweet Moet and Chandon Imperial Rosé, and a Vaucliquois de Messe. They were all delightful, with my favorite being the Brut, as I enjoy how crisp and bright it was on the palate. I went ahead and ordered an additional peach-flavored sparkling wine, which was dessert in a glass. Very peach-forward, very sweet, but a very enjoyable sweet wine. With that, our day came to a close. I am a huge fan of Disney's Epcot, not just because of the fun attractions and the infotainment associated with the World Showcase, but because there were always fun and unique food and beverages along the way. Please drink responsibly. We'll see you next time.